Did you know that when I was just improvising, I was only using one scale the entire time, yet I can't tell you how many times I've heard a student tell me that they need to learn more scales to make their playing sound more interesting. It's like a painter who says, I have seven colors to paint with, but I can only think of one thing to paint. If only I had seven more colors to paint with, then I could think of more things to paint. The truth is that scales by themselves don't necessarily make your solo sound interesting. Instead, what will make your solo sound more interesting is what you do with your scales. And this is where I see students go wrong. They only use a tiny fraction of the possible improv techniques available to them, and then they think the problem is that they need to learn more scales. So in today's lesson, I'm going to show you how to take an ordinary seven note major scale and make it sound amazing with one simple yet often overlooked technique. Let's go ahead and dive in. All right, for today's lesson, we're gonna keep it very simple and we're just gonna focus on a simple major chord. This is a C major chord and we wanna make it sound a little bit jazzy, okay? So we're gonna add basically one note to this chord. I like to add a B to the chord, which is called the seventh. This turns it into a C major seven or you could put the six on the top, the A, and this turns it into a C major six chord, okay? So I do recommend that you play one of these chords, okay? Now the scale we're gonna use in our right hand is only seven notes, it's our C major major scale, right? Very, very simple scale. Now, most pianists, when they're improvising with the C major scale, they're gonna play stuff like this. Right? Or they might skip thirds and play something like this. Right? And so this is a good place to get started with improv, but it can start to sound a little boring after a while. And you might be thinking, well, I need to learn more scales to make my solo sound interesting. But here's where you're off. You can do so much more with your major scale. In fact, I could take the same seven notes and create a little improv like this. What am I doing in the right hand? Well, I'm using some very cool improv techniques which I'm gonna teach you today. But before we do this, if you're enjoying this lesson, please hit the like button. And if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe for more videos just like this. Okay, what am I doing here in the right hand? Well, I'm using a very cool technique called diatonic seventh chords. I wanna teach you these chords and then I'm gonna show you exactly how to improvise with them because you don't use all of these chords equally. Some are more important than others. Okay, what are diatonic seventh chords? Well, if you take the C major scale and you skip every other note from the scale, you end up with a seventh chord. This is called a C major seven chord, and it is the first seventh chord that comes from the C major scale. And so you can do this on every note of the C major scale. If I do this on a D, skip every other note, I end up with what's called a D minor seven chord. This is the two chord in the key of C major, okay? And so I would encourage you to practice this on every note from the C major scale. This is an E minor seven. This is called an F major seven. And by the way, if these terms are confusing to you or you don't quite understand why we call them by these names, don't worry, it'll make sense over time, okay? This is called your five chord or your G7, your six chord or A minor seven, and finally your seven chord, okay? These are called the diatonic seventh chords because they're all of the seventh chords that come from the major scale, which is also called the diatonic scale. Now you might be thinking, okay, Johnny, that sounds great, but how can I actually use this in my improvisation? And that is the question to ask. So this gets us to our next topic, which is you can use these seventh chords, but some are more important than others, okay? So I call these primary pairs and I call them secondary pairs. The really important ones to know are the primary pairs. They're the ones that I use the most often. sound amazing. So there are three of these primary pairs. I'm going to teach these to you and then we'll talk about the secondary pairs and then I'll show you exactly how to use these in your improv. Okay, the three primary pairs are one, two, and three. Okay, we're going to go over these briefly. The first primary pair is built on the first note of the C major scale. So I call this a one build because it's built on the first note of the scale. Okay, it's that simple. The second pair is going to be built on the third note of the C major scale. 
okay? So this would be your E minor seven chord. And then your third pair is built on the sixth note of the C major scale. This is our A minor seven chord, okay? So these are the three pairs, one, two, and three. And by the way, you could do this on any major chord. So like, let's say you wanted to practice this in the key of F major, you could also do this in F. One, three, and six. Okay, so let's go back to C, and here's the idea of the primary pairs. These pairs are gonna sound the best on a chord like C major. It's gonna really resonate uh, nicely. So I would encourage you to jump around to each of these pairs. You can come up and down the piano and get nice and comfortable seeing these notes. Now the reason I call these pairs is because you can pair these chords together when you're improvising. For example, you could pair the C chord with the E chord, or the E chord with the A chord, or you could mix all three chords together. All right, so we have three primary pairs. That means we must have four secondary pairs. Okay, so I'm briefly gonna show you the secondary pairs and then we'll talk about how to use them in your solo. Okay, the secondary pairs are built on the two, the four, the five, and the seven. Okay, and the secondary pairs do not sound as good as the primary pairs because they don't match the chord very well. So if I played a seventh chord on the D, which is the two of the C major scale, kind of clashes a little bit with the chord. Same thing with the four, kind of clashes, right? The fifth, kind of clashes, right? You hear that clash there? And then the seven, kind of clashes as well, okay? So when you're soloing, you can use secondary pairs in your improvisation. We're just not gonna use them as often. We're gonna basically focus primarily on the primary pairs and then occasionally use the secondary pairs. Okay, so are you ready to improvise with these? Not yet. We first need to do a quick little exercise to practice our primary pairs. This is a great exercise to master your primary pairs and it's very simple. Okay, in the left hand, I encourage you to play a C6 or you can play a C major seven. Again, kind of a jazzy version of a C chord and here's the exercise. Okay, it's actually really simple. Okay, we're gonna grab the chord in our left hand. We're gonna come up our one primary pair. And then we're gonna go three primary pair. And then six primary pair. And one primary pair. It's that simple, okay? Then we're gonna come down one primary pair six primary pair, three primary pair, and one primary pair, okay? It's that simple. Now the rhythm goes like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. All right, before we improvise with these pairs, let's quickly play this exercise with the included backing tracks. We're gonna play this with a slower backing track at 100 BPM and go ahead and play along with me. And here we go. By the way, this lesson comes with four downloadable backing tracks at different tempos. You can also download the lesson sheet music you're seeing up here on the top left of the screen. And you can change the key of this entire lesson with the click of one button with our smart sheet music. So I'll put a link to all of that below. All right, congratulations. You are now ready to start improvising with your primary pairs. I'm gonna show you three improv examples and then I'm gonna sort of walk you through how to create your own improvisation. Here's example number one. sound amazing and what I was basically just doing is playing my primary and secondary pairs. Okay, left hand, we're gonna keep it nice and simple on a C6 chord and here's what we just did. I came up my three pair, okay, and then I used the B as a little transition note to my one pair like that, okay? So up the three pair, transition note, one pair, and I'm gonna come down my one pair my seven, okay, that's a secondary pair, it's kind of a passing pair, and then, basically here, that's a six pair, transition note G, and I'm gonna com come down my three pair, and then C, G, okay? Doesn't that sound amazing? And when you put it all together, it sounds really nice. I'll play it slowly, one. One, two, three, four, one, two. 
Here's example number two. Okay. Again, I'm just using my primary and secondary pairs on this line. Okay, we're gonna play a C6 in our left hand. In the right hand, we're gonna use our six pair, and we're gonna start on the E, okay? So we're gonna go. And then we're gonna go to our three pair, but we're gonna start on the G, right? So G, and we walk up that pair. And now we're gonna go to our secondary pair on the F, okay? Just coming up. And then we're gonna use some transition notes, D, B, little enclosure to our C pair. And we're gonna come up that pair, and we're gonna walk it down to G, okay? Now if we put the whole thing together, here's what it sounds like at a slow tempo. One, two, three, four. All right, before I teach you example number three, if you're enjoying this lesson and you wanna learn even more techniques like this for improvising on your major scale, check out our How to Improvise a Solo with the Major Skill course. In this course, you'll learn even more techniques like how to use turns, triad pairs, patterns. You'll learn a variety of exercises, different left hand accompaniments. So I'll put a link to the course below. All right, here's example number three. Doesn't that sound amazing? And it's actually not that hard to play. So we're gonna play a C6 in our left hand. In the right hand, we're gonna do this cool little pattern on our three pair. It goes like this. So I'm coming down the top three notes and then the bottom three notes. And we're gonna do this on each of our primary pairs. So the three pair, the one pair, the six pair, and the three pair. Doesn't that sound cool? And at the very end, we're gonna go, this is our two pair, that secondary pair. We're gonna come up the full chord, and then the six pair, and we end on the E. Okay, it's that simple. Here's how it sounds at a slow tempo. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one. Two, three, four, one. All right, I wanna walk you through how to make up some of your own lines. So what I would encourage you to do, start on your C6 chord and pick a pair that you like, maybe the three pair. And then go to the six pair. Now here you might go to your seven pair and then your six pair. And maybe back down to your three pair. And then maybe your two pair and then your one pair, and you end your line like that. Okay, this is how you build lines using your pairs. Let's do one more. Let's start nice and high on this one. Maybe start with your one pair. Maybe your six pair. And then let's go to your three pair. And then maybe your two pair. And now maybe your one pair. And maybe your six pair. And we'll end on the E. And finally, I'm gonna make up some lines at a slow tempo so you can see how I would improvise with the primary pairs. There's my line. Let's use some secondary pairs. Hey, thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this lesson, please let me know in the comments, and also be sure to check out pianowithjohnny.com. We have over 1,000 step-by-step lessons for all playing levels, where you'll learn your favorite songs, styles, and how to improvise at the piano. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.